I have some of these motorized slide potentiometers, or faders, that I wanted to get working in projects like audio mixers or graphic EQs, things like that. So I needed a controller module for these, and PCBWay sponsored the project, allowing me to put a little controller directly onto this pot, controlling the position of this fader over I squared C. A quick summary on how this works would be, this board has an L293 motor driver, so depending which direction this DC motor is run, there's a belt and pulley system to move the fader up or down. And that's controlled with I squared C commands coming from some other controller, and it has an ATtiny 804 zero series chip. So an I squared C command comes in to give a percentage position from 0% down near the motor up to 100% over at the far end, and if needed, the fader will move until it gets to that target position. So data and power come in on this cable, and there's a duplicate header here, so we can pass on the power and communication to another fader and keep going as many as we need to control. This zero series AT tiny chip is programmed with this UPDI header. Power for the motor comes to this header. The actual potentiometer that we are controlling with this slider has three pins right here. That would go to whatever amplifier or EQ type circuit we're actually hooking a pot to, and the motor is controlled with these pins here. This is a PSM series pot, and they're available currently on places like Mauser and DigiKey, and I'm using a 10K pot. The motor can run from 6 to 11 volts. I'm just testing it at 8 volts right now, and the motor may need up to 800 milliamps when starting up, so I'm using a bench power supply for now. I'm not making use of it, but this can actually respond to touch if we have a conductive knob on there, but I don't, so I just put a test point on the board in case I ever want to use this. Otherwise, there's three terminals for the main 10K pot, and then there's a duplicate pot used as a servo track to tell what position this fader is at. So if we read in the wiper on this pot and connect the ends to VCC and ground, we can run this to an analog input and figure out what percentage of travel we have moved on the pot, run the motor, and just keep reading this to see what position we're at and stop where we would like. The L293DD that I'm using can run 600 milliamps per channel in this driver, or a peak of 1.2 amps. And since I only need two channels here, I'm connecting in parallel to be able to handle more current. The schematic is relatively simple. Down at the bottom I have all of these connectors to bring in power for the logic and motor, I squared C, power and I squared C pass through, and the output for the actual pot and the motor. The pot is connected up right here, so this top one is the actual pot that we're connecting to some other circuit, and the servo track one is just 5 volts ground and going to an analog input on the AT Tiny. The serial clock and data pins just go straight to the AT Tiny, and I do not have pull up resistors on here because the intent would be to have many of these boards all connected together, so we don't want pull ups on all the boards. I'm just going to put them on the main controller. Any unused pins I have on test points in case I need them, and I've got zero ohm jumpers in series with all of these IOs, including over on the driver, partly in case I need to separate anything for debugging, or maybe if I need to use different GPIO pins for some reason, I can split the connection here and just jump right over. So the motor direction pins and the enable pins are connected directly from here to here, and if I want I can PWM this enable, but I'm currently running it at full duty when I do let the motor run, and the motor output goes to the potentiometer's motor. In order to test this, I have a separate Arduino Uno set up just to let me type in a number from 0 to 100 on the serial monitor to represent what percentage of travel I want the pot to go to. I read that in and send it out over I squared C, and it's received by the board on the pot. And the sketch running the actual AT tiny on the pot, I just set an arbitrary I squared C address of 54 hex, set up what pins I'm using for what, 
This is the pin where I read in the servo track on the pot to tell what position we are at, and the ADC reading will be a max of 1023 on that servo pin. So to move it, I'm comparing what percentage of 1023 are we at. After powering up and configuring the pins, in the main loop we're really just waiting for something to come in over I squared C, and if it does, we move the pot. Otherwise, I'm just continually reading in that servo track to keep an eye on what position we are. Because we can manually move the fader as well, and we always want to know where we are. So when new data comes in over I squared C, it automatically runs this function. It goes and reads in that number from 0 to 100 that I sent from the Arduino Uno, sets a flag to say there's new data, and that gets picked up in the main loop, and we calculate how far do we want to move the pot based on this percentage number we sent, and then go move it at the certain speed. So when we're moving it, we clear the flag because we now already are handling this new data. We take a look at the current position by reading in the servo track, and if it's not already in that position, we move it one way or the other way until it does match the position we want. So we start running the motor if needed, and then just wait until the servo matches where we want. Then we turn off the motor, and we're back in the main loop, waiting for new data. There's the motorized slide pot, and I have a multimeter to check the resistance. I can go down to 0 ohms. Well, it's showing 11 on the wiper. I think it can go up to 30 ohms on the wiper, and 10k or so maximum, 10.2, or somewhere in the middle, 4.6, 5 something. So the motor is down here, which controls everything, and I'm considering this bottom, so minimal resistance and position zero, and at the top, with max resistance away from the motor, I'm calling this 100% as far as how much travel we've gone. So I'll put it just somewhere toward the middle. I'm using 8 volt power supply for the motor, and I have two Arduino Unos here. This bottom one is a UPDI programmer going to the programming pins. The top one is just a master I squared C controller running some test code. So it's giving the board logic 5 volts and I squared C. There's pull up resistors over here on the breadboard going to VCC. With this Uno I squared C controller, it allows me to enter a percentage position of travel. I want to move this fader to from 0% to the max 100%. So if I throw it in the middle range, over in the serial monitor, if I say I want to go to position 0% and enter, it just ran the fader down to minimum. Well, it goes, it's showing 87 ohms. So if I manually go all the way, we're back to about 12 ohms. That's just the way the software in here is set up. I kind of go approximately to the target. I don't want to overshoot while I'm just prototyping. And I'm running it at full speed instead of controlling the speed with PWM. So in the future, what I would do is probably go faster toward target position and then slow down with PWM and go more precise. But there's going to be errors anyway, like the resistor tolerance. I can try to go to the max 10 times in a row, and it might be slightly a different resistance every time. So it's going to be hard to get an exact position, but it's good enough. Now if I want to go to 100%, it shoots all the way to the top, and it's 10.2k. If I want to go 50% in the middle, somewhere toward 5k, oh, exactly 5.013. It's kind of hard to see the percentage of travel, so this measurement of the resistor is good. If I want to go to 25%, it's kind of toward 2.5k, 60%, somewhere around 6k, 10%, somewhere around 1k. So it's working generally okay. I just may want to work on the software, add some more features like Right now, this is just receiving commands and blindly going to a position. Maybe I can expand it so that it can be pulled to query 
what position is it at, and then send that over. And of course, maybe I want to work on the PWM and get this control more precise, but for now, this is a good first step. Well, this is going to come in very useful. I have 10 of these fader pots, and now that I can control them, I can put them in any kind of audio circuits and run them, whether it's a couple or all 10 at once, and this will lead to a lot of projects. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring the project. Thanks for watching.